So I know we're always telling you to make sure you're ready for the next big one, but I bet a few of you wish you knew what our own earth scientists here at GNS are doing. So a few of them decided to show us. Hi, I'm Terry Webb. I'm Hannah Brackley. My name's Julian Thompson. I work at GNS Science. Welcome to Pilar and Kelvin's house. I'm Martin Rainers. Hi, my name's Graham Leonard from GNS Science. We store our emergency food uh, in a couple of different places. So uh, we've also got a spare cupboard full of tins and emergency food under here. We have as a lot of supplies always uh, in the pantry and then we have some extra downstairs in a shed so in case we cannot access the pantry. We've got our boxes of civil defence supplies which is things like cookers, radios, torches, batteries, toilet paper, the kind of practical bits and pieces. We've got torches by our beds. So I have the beginnings of an emergency kit here in my storage cupboard, again in the strongest part of the building, so somewhere that I should be able to access easily enough. In my emergency kit I have some uh, black plastic bags, a lantern, a rain poncho, a wind-up radio torch, torches. I've got a container of water. Yes, this is one of the water supplies that we have. We have one here up in the shed and we have another one in another shed downstairs. When you're renovating a house, of course, you often have to redo the plumbing and we put a whole new hot water system in. And behind this wall, we've got a 300 litre tank. It's all strapped back for earthquakes. But one thing which was very easy to do when we were plumbing it in was actually put a little tap which drains the bottom of that tank if we lose the main supply during an earthquake. So during an earthquake, by just unscrewing this little cap here, we have 300 litres of fresh water. It's a very simple thing, costs very little to do, but if you're going to be renovating a, a system anyway, very worthwhile. So I've fitted this, um, this tank which has got a thousand litre capacity and it's on a little wooden stand so we can put a bucket or a container underneath to collect the water and the water's coming off the roof and I can divert it to go straight down the drain if the tank is full and I don't need to keep flushing water through the system. So when you look around the house uh, we don't have a lot of shelving up high. Uh, most of our storage is relatively low so things can't fall off in an earthquake and when we do have something fixed to the wall uh, we fix it quite securely so this TV's on a bracket that's actually got a latch on the back so you can't get it off the wall without reaching behind and, and unclipping a little latch. So when we renovated the house we kept the, uh, the, the timber sarking from a 110 year old house on the walls to give it extra bracing and then we also put 13 millimeter jib on top of everything throughout the house when we re-jibbed, re which is a thicker jib which has got more of a, more of a shear rating so that it's, uh, it's stronger. And as you can see it leaves uh, quite a wide wall so we actually had to make the jam that little bit extra width because of the thickness of the wall when we put the store in. So in under here, uh, engineering L bracket that bolts a bearer onto the front foundation wall so that they've got a, a strong positive connection and that wall won't separate from the house. So when we built the, the deck even, we made sure the piles were down a few hundred millimetres to have some shear strength, not just being load bearing, which is important for earthquakes. And then you can see the pile is attached to the bearers with a pair of wire dogs on each corner to give it again uh, shear strength in an earthquake so that the, the deck in this case, but the same is true for a house, uh, can't shear away from the piles. So one of the first things that we did was get rid of the chimneys that were hanging over our deck here. They were ready to come down, so that was the first thing we did. And one of the other things is this house is really quite solid, but it has this very long sunroom at the front, which is just on posts. And when we came, all the ornamentation you see there on the posts had actually fallen down. And we put it all back because that actually gives a lot more strength to the sunroom, which moves independently of the house in an earthquake. So during the last earthquake, that actually stood up really well, and I was very pleased that just putting that extra bracing in, it helped. Yeah, here's a brace just on the deck. All, all the new decks we put on have bracing, which, which is a very useful thing to have. Our building was built in the mid-1960s. Um, it's been rated by Wellington City Council as 69% of the current new building standard. 
so well above their requirements in terms of earthquake strength. So when we came here and thought about doing the refurbishment, turning the house around, um, at some extra cost, but not an enormous extra cost, we could do full code because we were already doing a lot with the wall linings, so it wasn't too hard uh, to bring it up to full code. But to make it strong enough, there's a big I-beam across here and another one running down there. And over there, um, you can see where they've left a remnant of wall, and that's to give it enough, the house, enough strength this way.